again, when we talk about personal freedom, embracing your free heartful alignment, it's about being vulnerable with yourself, not necessarily with your audience or people, but just more of your, with yourself. So, and I'm sure you've heard the saying, we can only go as deep with others as we've gone with ourselves. So if you're, if you're desiring to have a deeper type of relationship with your partner, you have to ask yourself, am I giving that to myself? Because if I'm not, then you're not going to attract, you're only going to get the level of depth that you've gone with yourself with that other person. Welcome, beautiful beings, to season two of the Cosmic Love Antenna podcast with your host, Harrison Ma. This podcast sets the loving intention of creating the mystical space needed to pull back the layers restricting health, alignment, and love. Now let's walk you home to your cosmic spiritual heart space. Good morning, evening, afternoon, beautiful beings. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to another deep dive and pulling back of the divine layers restricting your health alignment and love today here on the show i have a powerful woman to go into an even more important and loving conversation before i do i want to welcome all of the beautiful beings joining us either live today on linkedin and youtube or if you're listening to the podcast thank you for sharing your energy and time with us if you get a bit of value and insight and guidance out of this chat today Please share it out with someone that you love, someone that you know it can impact and leave your feedback and comments and maybe some questions that come up based off what we talk about today over on Apple and Spotify in reviews. I have the beautiful pleasure to welcome onto the show, Jessica Marie. Jessica is going to help me today go into this topic of heartfelt expansion, heartfelt alignment, and as she calls it, embracing your free Jessica is a powerful life coach, a spiritual guide, breathwork facilitator, and uh, as you'll soon see, a very divine heart. And today we're going to go into the depths between all things, as I said, heartfelt alignment, what this means, and why it's important in your life. Jessica, welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Really excited. I was. Um, I was sharing with you before we started recording that uh, as I woke up this morning, I was feeling so activated and there are many reasons for that. But I think one of the reasons is, you know, the beautiful energy and the work that you do in the world and the soul that you are. So I guess where I want to start is, and this might be a little bit of a rabbit hole, so we'll see where we go. The soul that you are and the work that you do in the world if you had to pick one moment that really ignited you or in another way of saying it lovingly kicked you in the bum to sort of step into this purpose, what comes onto your heart? Hmm. Ultimately, I think getting out of my environment when um, I had my heart set on moving to Los Angeles in 2016 after um, I finished up college and I had a lot of a lot of factors to play into um, moving to a big city to start a dream of mine, which I didn't know at the time was, but I just knew it was like ambition, creativity and just something to help pull something within me and create something from it. And, um, once I kind of allowed myself the space to follow that dream, I'm an only child. I have mostly my mother's just only in my life. I had a lot of friends that were staying behind, right. All of these influences to say, no, just stay, just stay. What about this? What about that? There was just something really deep inside me that was like, but I can't, I have to just be and focus on myself. And so, um, moving to Los Angeles was like the the start, the catalyzer of everything, I have to say. It sounds like that, you know, LA was a beautiful mirror, right? It, you know, as someone, I haven't lived in LA, but I have spent a lot of time there in uh, my early 20s and there's a lot going on, <laughs> to say the least. And I think all the shadows there, they act in the way of a, a mirror. They help us to see what maybe we've been ignoring and suppressing. In your case, it was a big part of your light 
Did you, did you notice that mirror effect that was going on? Not at the time I was pretty unconscious. I just knew that I was like happy to be in Los Angeles and I gave myself one year to, you know, get a job at the time. Again, I went to school. I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Um, and so I was working for a, uh, luxury, uh, fashion athleisure brand at the mm. time. And I got to dip my hands in many different hats. However, at the same time, I ended up going through a really, um, a really big health journey for myself that I didn't mm. recognize needed my attention. I gained yeah. 30 pounds in five months and it was a really big challenge because I had to face those parts of myself that were just unaligned. And again, I didn't know this verbiage at the time, but I, when I can reflect back, I was really out of alignment. I was partying, I was drinking. Um, and I just really was, taking out the unfulfillment I had in my job out into my community yeah. and out into my lifestyle. And then it started to eat me up in the inside out and I had to make a change. And so to have a long story short, it gave me, it shed some light on, um, understanding my body at a, at a deeper level. I got into personal training. I got into nutrition and then, um, I started over time really falling in love with the gym. And then maybe, you know, that gave me an open door to think about something else for my career. So I'm, I'm laughing and smiling, Jessica, because, well, firstly, I just want to honor you. Thank you for sharing your lovely journey and story. The reason I'm smiling so much is I see a lot of my journey in yours. We we're very similar for people that have listened to the podcast. Uh, basically, exactly the same, except in the male body. <laughs> and uh, I started my journey as a as a physical personal trainer. But something I noticed, and this is my next question for you, and this sort of starts to ease into our main topic here today of heartfelt alignment and embracing your free. I noticed. Jessica, that once I started honing in on the physical and supporting my physical, supporting other people's physical, it wasn't enough. There, there was something deeper under the physical mm -hmm. that was both yearning inside of me and I could feel it yearning inside of the people I was supporting that needed to be seen. Does That's this resonate with you? Yeah. You know, I, I was, I was giggling myself too, because I, I didn't, know that you started in, 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 uh, in, uh, personal training too, or just fitness. And I think a lot of coaches I've talked to have kind of transitioned more into this, like deeper emotive transformational type of coaching. And I think because fitness is just an open door to personal development because you're working on yourself physically, but also it's like a mental game as well. Getting yourself to the gym, eating right. Maybe, um, like I ended up doing a bodybuilding competition from my fitness journey. Um, and so that gave me so much like, wow, like look how strong I am mentally. Um, and then when I started diving deeper into that, my clients, universe is beautiful way. Uh, my clients started to reflect back to me that they were going like when they started working with me for fitness, uh, personal training, it was, we started to having conversation. It was like, Oh, well, I want to lose weight to feel more attractive. I want to lose weight to have more intimacy with my husband. It was like, Whoa, wait, 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 this has nothing to do with the gym. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, um, and you know, people are beautiful mirrors and triggers for us. And that started to awaken part of me that was not, um, doing that work on myself. So I kind of was like, wow, if I'm not working on my mental health as well, and why, like, what am I in fitness, you know, and, and all of that. So it really kind of opened the door to recognize that I wasn't really being fully truthful of like why I was in the gym as well. I felt good, but also I was seeking the same yeah. thing that they were. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a, uh, a phenomena that I want, I want to make really clear for everyone tuning in. Cause I know a lot of light workers and coaches and healers listen to this show. You know, this is not a Jessica thing. This is not a Harrison thing. You know, we attract, <laughs> we attract what we are, right? So uh, mm -hmm. one of the best ways, I just want to honor what you're saying here, Jessica, one of the best ways that I've sort of worked on myself is I've looked at my current client base and I've asked the question, what is the common theme, right? What is the common thing that they're coming me coming to me for? And usually, yes, I have answers, but there's, there's usually more questions on my end, right? More questions that I can go deeper. I think maybe get your reflections on this. I think that's the beautiful gift 
in you know being of service we're constantly attracting more ways for us to become more mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I, I all of my clients have been a reflection of somewhere I was or still am you know and so it's like as we help other people we're actually also helping ourselves and giving ourselves that advice and and all of that so yeah that's definitely started with the fitness coaching and I kind of fell out of love with it towards the end of 2020. And I remember in my bathroom, I'm still in in LA at this point, I'm like scrolling on my phone and I'm like, what is, what am I looking for? What do I want to be? And I wrote mindset. And I started looking at it. I'm like, no more than that. And then all of a sudden it was like confidence coach. And it was like, it was like saying helping people or women who can, um, to feel more, of like more empowered to be themselves. And I was like, Oh, that's it. That's, that's it. And so, um, I decided in the beginning of 2021, I was shifting my business, got a mentor, um, rest is history. (laughs) I'm just kidding. But, um, that was like a big call for me. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first time that I really started to look at what was underneath the physical appearance. Yeah. And I think, you know, just for everyone tuning in, I encourage, this is one step that we can all start to take is the physical is beautiful. And I think we'll maybe speak about this later, but it also shows us that the physical is the, is the gateway to these deeper answers and the gateway, we don't want to leave it behind, right? We want to step through the gate, but we don't want to transcend it, right? Because there will Mm -hmm. always be more for us to process and move through this sort of taps into another question I want to go into here now, Jessica, with you. And uh, the title of this podcast will be along the lines of embracing your free. And I know that this is a big part of what you are now standing in your heartfelt alignment and purpose. So let's break it down and go deeper. What does that mean to you? What does embracing your free, what does that mean to you? Hmm. You know, it's, it's definitely evolved over the years, but truthfully, it's always meant just feeling okay with who I am in my body and my mind and my soul. And so embracing your free is really finding your own personal freedom and, and just being you, you know, we spend so much time walking around trying to be somebody that we think we need to be for the validation of approval for the validation of success for the validation of love and connection and safety and support and all of these survival um mechanisms and truthfully we just kind of forget who we are or we have something abruptly happen in our life where it shakes us up to the point where we need to look in the mirror and so i have over these last like 3 years of my spiritual awakening and really coming into my purpose it's been a slap in the face like every time because i'm starting to every every day every time i move through something really challenging so i think It's just another peeling back of the layer of who I actually am. And I just feel my purpose is expanding and growing and getting more clear of not only helping people unravel those layers, but really understanding the core essence of who they are. Because when we get to that, that's freedom. And when we're free, we can be anything that we want. Yeah. And I just really want to be an advocate for that. Yeah. Oh, so much in here already, Jessica, that we could dive into, but I want to, I want to welcome people on LinkedIn. Firstly, if you're joining, watching live today, if you have questions, comments today, please pop it in the live chat. I'd love to add your uniqueness into this conversation. Jessica, I want to pull out a word that you said. You said, we put on these masks and these personas and things we think we should be in order to stay safe. And I want to get your opinion on this as a, I know you do a lot of breath work, you know, you said many things and the reasons in terms of why we keep these masks on, but let's be honest. What is the percentage of safety? What is the percentage of the things that we're keeping on? Because we have been through some kind of trauma, whether it be childhood, whether it be ancestral, whether it be deeper than that, we're keeping on the things that we think we should be because we would just want to stay safe. We just want to stay And I'll add a little asterisk in the illusion of safety that we've created. What's, what are your thoughts on this? We'll do anything. 
anything to stay safe Yeah. until something breaks the barrier and we have to get uncomfortable. And I think that we have to get into a place where something hurts so bad. Unfortunately, we have to get to those rock bottoms where something hurts so bad to start creating change. Um, And, you know, that's what's really been a big part of my journey is finding with what safety looks like. It's like um, really allowing ourselves to redefine safety, but I think also being okay with being uncomfortable. And I think that's the biggest thing to, to share there because we can't, we all know this, you know, we all hear it all the time. Like, um, you know, change can't happen while you're comfortable and, you know, you have to grow and get out of your comfort zone and everyone just kind of rolls their eyes or say, yeah, I know, but do you, do you really know? Because, um, it depends on how far you want to go. I, I think everyone has potential. Um, it just depends on like how far you're willing to go for it. And so when we talk about safety, it's, it's learning to expand our window of tolerance for discomfort and really playing with the threshold of safety. And so when we can tolerate more discomfort, for the end goal of, let's say that is to build a business. Let's say that is to, um, leave a relationship that's comfortable. Hi, (laughs) you know, and so we have to expand our window for, for discomfort because the more that we can do that, guess what? That's going to really expand our window for pleasure. And so to me, you're on learning what that looks like. So therefore you can create your own identity. You can create your own level of what you want to play with and what you feel safe to play in. We can all, um, I think that we can all unlearn our programs and, 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 um, our judgments and the way that we, our belief systems, right. We just have to want to do the work to do it. Beautifully said, Jessica, I can feel your passion and the grace that you have with, with supporting people like this. And this is really what I want to hit on now with what you're saying, stepping into that unknown, stepping into that unsafe space. I've noticed in my journey, not just within people I've helped, but just in my journey, one of the reasons we have difficulty with that unknown is the limiting belief that we have to do it alone, right? Is the limiting belief of the superhero archetype, right? That I have to go out there and I have to bear it all and I have to move through the pain, gain the lesson. And I have to do all of that by myself. And yeah, I'm sure big chunks of the journey might involve that, but that doesn't mean that has to be the norm. And I guess what I'm getting at here, Jessica, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this is, you know, what is the role of seeking guidance when we start to tap into this Mm -hmm. freedom, we start to tap into this heartfelt alignment. What are your thoughts on this? I think that there's a lot to unpack there as far as seeking support. And I think that when we're, when we're looking at the hero archetype, yeah, um, I've definitely been there. I've had uh, clients before they started working with me be in that place because they're like, no, I'm just here to heal on my own. I meant to figure it out all on my own. And it's like, yeah, until you're not, (laughs) you know, we, we're supposed to thrive in community. We're supposed to heal in community. There is so much to say around being in a group of people and also even working one-on-one with somebody, whether that's a therapist or a coach or whoever. And I think it's really because we will, we get into these spirals, right? With our ego a lot. And so if we allow ourselves to actually let the ego down a little bit and actually see somebody else or work with somebody else, or even just being in community, sharing your thoughts, you're going to get a different perspective. So part of me is actually thinking like, that's just a coping mechanism for you to just stay who you are, you know, versus, you know, allowing yourself to seek help. And then on the other side of the coin, it's, you know, are you able to navigate yourself coach yourself 
all while, you know, not working with somebody at the same time, because I've also been in that place too, where I've had mentor after mentor after mentor, because I was so afraid that I would just not be, know how to figure it out. So there, there's two sides of the coin. So I think ultimately having a balance of both is very healthy and knowing again, and knowing where you're at egoically, like yeah. which one is it, which one's playing the narrative right now. I think that's, I'm so happy that you pointed that other end of the coin out because that's, yeah, it's about awareness at the end of the day. It's about self-awareness and asking, what do I honestly need right now? Am I ignoring the need for physical support or am I, again, as you said, jumping from one person to another? I want to, can we go super spiritual here, Jessica? Because there's something else that came through that I want to ask you. You're talking my language. All right. All right. <laughs> so this is continuing this support, right? Being open to support. And I've noticed as I've started to align with my heartfelt journey, you know, the heart is, you know, we won't go down this conversation, but just to put it very simple, the, the heart is a portal to your multidimensional self. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that it opens us, when we align ourselves with our heart, it opens us to different dimensions of consciousness. Okay. And what I want to get your thoughts on, Jessica, is, is the support that comes into our world when we start to take this journey, is it only in the 3D? Is it only in 3D mentors, coaches, people, friends, family, or is there other kinds of support that comes in that we can open to? Yeah, no, it has to be. <laughs> it has to be both. You know, I, I think that if you turn your, your, your intuition off completely, you're going to go insane. Right. And so, I mean, my, what my if, first, what have you experienced, Jessica? I'm wondering what have like, what have, what has come in for you? If yeah, you don't mind sharing. I was, yes, yes. I would love to, um, I love to get into all of the, the woo woo stuff. Um, because it really, it really gave me a it really opened myself up to my intuition. Breath work was my first experience um, connecting with my intuition. At the time, I was moving through um, a, a relationship that ended really roughly. And just to give a backstory, I'm sure a lot of you women can maybe relate to this. Um, it was an eight week relationship. Okay. Like I was crying every day. And I was like, at the time, I wasn't really fully consciously aware, but I had some awareness of like, this isn't normal. And so my, my friend at the time was like, Hey, come to this breathwork thing with me. And I was like, okay, like, I don't know what that is, but sure. And she's like, don't ask questions, just come. And it was like a holotropic style breathwork, which is what I teach. And so long story short, I had a really powerful experience. I had a whole out of body experience. I was very open to the messages. Um, and I've always believed in a higher power. I just never practiced, never meditated anything of like that. And so that was the beginning of like a, Ooh, I'm going to pocket that experience because that was really powerful for me. But again, that wasn't at the time where I was like awakening. It was just kind of like, I think spirit was like, we're going to give you a little, a little example of what it means to like actually connect with yourself and get the answers. And I got out of that breath work feeling like a whole new woman. I moved on so quick. It was, I was just really shocked. So to answer your question, um, I think it has absolutely everything to do with what you do. I mean, I can even share more of my personal experiences with, with higher consciousness, but ultimately it's given me a purpose. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I'm, let's go deeper because I feel like there's more here, Jessica, that you can share. And I, first of all, I think you've already given it. it, you've, you've already <laughs> shared a beautiful example, right? Let's just hit on that for a second, right? This activation of our intuition. And, you know, this is again, not a Jessica thing. This is, we all have this, right? I teach so much about this mm -hmm. on my show and this higher power. I think the biggest illusion that we can all have is to think that the higher power is outside of us, right? That intuition mm -hmm. is your channel to the higher power that is you, that's in mm -hmm. your heart, right? So let's just, mm -hmm. let's just put a full stop on that one. But Jessica, this is what I want to sort of go deeper onto now. Yes, intuition that's one of these examples of spirit coming in to help us into heartfelt alignment and purpose. But what I want to hear about Jessica is I speak a lot about on the show, connecting to angels and guides and ancestors and these other kinds of 
higher consciousness, let's call them entities, loving entities that interact with us once we start to open our heart field. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering on your journey, is this all crazy? Is this something you've yet to experience or do you have experiences with this and what do they look like? Ooh. Um, I mean, for me, this is like normal conversation. Um, so it sounds like feeling. a lot of feeling. Yeah. Feeling. Higher feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure a lot of your listeners are like, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, we're here, we're here for that. So um, I feel like I can just go di- like dive deeper into that without having to maybe explain certain things. But yeah, I mean, my first experience with connecting with spirit was through a psilocybin journey I did last year, and it was profound to say the least, um, again, allowing me to open my heart, really ultimately seeing what else is out there. I think truthfully, when we're not connected to source power, um, any sort of higher power, we are walking around asleep and unconscious. And then we are just thinking like, well, these are the cards I'm dealt. This is just what it is. And truthfully, when you start to get curious about your experiences, I think that's where, um, universe, spirit really comes in to play. Um, and so for me, breathwork was again, that seed that was planted later about a, maybe a little less than a year from that is when I started having a spiritual awakening, getting to meditation, all of that. And so I felt this again, I didn't know what it was, but I'm like, I feel this like call. I don't know. I feel this like thing about mushrooms on my heart right now. What is this? And so, um, when I listened to that, I dove deeper into it. It was a really profound experience again. And I just, and I think you, and I'm sure, um, Harrison, you can agree with this is like, when you, when you connect with your guides or, you know, con- higher consciousness, you just feel like I am me. Like yeah. it just cracked me open where I was like, holy crap. Like, I didn't know who I was until this point. I'm still unraveling that, but there's like yeah. the sense of like, connection with yourself you never thought was possible. And I don't know how else to explain that unless if you've had an awakening before. And so, yeah. And so that just really opened my mind to absolutely like, I am, I am so much more than I thought I was. And I'm so deeply supported and held. And so I co-create with spirit a lot and I'm actually diving deeper into my intuitive abilities to expand them because um, that's just, what's being shown for me. Like my, both of my ears are ringing very loudly yeah. right now. So I'm like, I know spirits here. She's hanging out. And so that's um, spirit speaking. Yeah. It's just been a really, it's been a really powerful experience. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So you learn how to listen to the messages. And I think that could be maybe a rabbit hole, but it's been a big part of my journey. A hundred percent. I wouldn't be where I am without connecting to a higher source. So Jessica, again, thank you for being so honest and open. And I can feel your excitement to speak about these topics. And, you know, one of my intentions for asking that was not just to hear your beautiful story, but to remind people listening that this is not crazy talk. Right. And I, I'll just give an example here. I had a beautiful conversation with a lovely soul this morning and, and I won't go too deeply into it, but one of the themes around the conversation was feeling like an outcast because of what this person was moving through, which is very similar to what you just explained. And I just, you know, I sense so much love for everyone out there that feels this way because we are, we, we exist in a collective that has so much programming around magic being abnormal right? Magic, your magic, which I would classify everything you just described as Jessica's magic, all of that being witchcraft, being strange, being, being abnormal, evil. evil. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. one. And all these things. And I'm not here to, to attack the system. What I am here to say is all of that's an illusion. And this is what I want to get your opinion on Jessica. What would change if all of that was not just real, but all of that was your birthright? All of that was what you are to begin with. What, what, what would shift in your opinion, Jessica? Uh, we wouldn't have to go through challenges. Um, we would be one, we would be abundant. We would have everything that we want. So in a way, I think that we need to have an awakening to really have something to compare to. It's kind of like, you don't know what you have until 
world's gone, um, so to speak, in the in the way of like having something to to kind of challenge us. Um, and I also think, and I'm sure for you as well, it was such an eye opening where you're like seeing everything in color for the first time. You're like, how have I been living my life this way? But I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it back. Um, and I'm and I'm definitely agree with you. Like I'm not here to attack the system, but like no matter if you're religious or spiritual, you are connecting to a higher power. I think I wouldn't say everyone, but oh, I think a majority of us, maybe I could say it, we believe in a higher power, whether or not you think it's God and Jesus versus I think it's a spirit guide. It's really the same energy. We're just we're we've just been programmed to share it in a different way. And, um, you know, so, some churches and religions like they want you to think about it in a certain way. And so. Um, I grew up Catholic actually. And so I never really felt called to mass. Yeah. I never felt called to mass. My mom never really practiced, but it was just like, not my vibe. And then actually, to be honest, it took me probably about a, I I started my, well, I've always been kind of like weird with the word God and Jesus until about a year ago. Um, God came in one of my dreams last year for the first time ever. And it was the first time that I was like, oh, okay. I don't have like a trigger around it anymore because I was just so like, this is how you pray. You have to go to church to like confess. And I was just like, what, why are we, what are we doing? Why do we need to do those things? And it makes me feel even more freaking shitty and guilty, (laughs) you know? So I, I think that, you know, there's, it's nice to have something to compare to, but I also think that if we could be more open-minded to that, there is a connection to a higher power, whatever that is. And we could be more open-minded to how everybody thinks and what they believe in. I think we'd have a lot more peace in the world. I mean, I think anyone can say that. Yeah, at the least. And uh, at I think the least, I, yeah. And like, I just want to make this underscore this, what you said, the pain is where the awakening happens. So mm-hmm. there will always be a polarity, right? There will always be evil, right? There is the op- it, there's a reason that evil is live backwards, right? It's there's mm. always there's always the polarity, but I think what will change is as we've already seen through the human history of our existence, the extremeness of the polarity, right? The the harshness of the par- polarity. So, you know, I think that's important for people to understand. But I want to go on a sort of like left turn here for a second, Jessica, and, and speak about another topic that I'm really feeling called to go into. And in regards to our heartfelt alignment and then embracing the free, as we talked about at the start of this conversation, the physical is important. We want to use the physical to awaken, but we want to come back to it. And one of the areas that I think most of us overlook is our sensuality, is our connection to our sensual, sometimes sexual energy that can support us in many ways. Mm -hmm. So I want to throw this at you, Jessica. What is your thoughts? What is your opinion on the role of sensuality as a pillar on this journey to heartfelt alignment? Well, I did just have a dance party before this podcast. So (laughs) Um, I think sensuality has, oh my gosh, I feel like truthfully, it has everything to do with heartful alignment, has everything to do with finding your freedom. Because again, we've been in a world and conditioned to hide that part of ourselves, right? We talk about religion, you're not allowed to wear, you have to wear a skirt a certain length. You can't, you, you know, you can't, you know, give yourself away before marriage, right? And so also even, this whole patriarchal world that we live in, it does play a role in our sexuality and how we are uh, sexualized as women. Um, You know, I mean, truthfully, it's like sometimes when I'm walking around, like I, in, in a neighborhood or wherever, I'm like trying to make sure like who's looking at me because it's just such a conditioning of like, well, men are gonna sexualize me, right? And so I've had to kind of unpack that a little bit more. And I'm slowly getting there. Um, But I think that sensuality is just getting more in tune with your body and feeling more alive within yourself. And I think when you can activate your confidence, 
you are tapping deeper into your sensuality. It's an embodiment, right? And it's a practice of constantly allowing yourself to feel more vulnerable with yourself. I think that's a part of sensuality. So I think it has absolutely everything to do with alignment because we are sensual beings. We are, um, we're primitive sometimes. So to be able to un- uh, awaken that and and allow that to be more wild is I think the way that we're naturally supposed to be. But again, with the deep programming conditioning of society and maybe how we grew up, it's more challenging for some people to get to that place. And I'm still navigating that. Like sometimes like I get triggered still when I see certain women or men doing a certain thing or like wearing a certain thing. And then I get to ask myself, like, what part of me is being triggered and feeling maybe shut down? Right. Oh, yeah. Let's 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 go deeper into this, my friend, because. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite topics to talk about and you'll see why in a second, but I just want to, I know that you're obviously in a, a, a lovely female body and you work with females mostly, but this sensual imbalance also exists in the males, right? It exists in like, I grew up as a little boy, for example, that suppressed his sensitivities and his emotions, right? And most mm. men out there are in that polarity, right? They, suppress their feelings and their sensitivities. And one of the places that shows up is in relationship to their sexual being, either themselves or the partners that they're with. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I just want to highlight, this is on both ends of the gender spectrum, but let's go deeper into the role of the sensual, uh, sexual being. You, You mentioned that a lot of the indoctrination most of it religious is there to suppress this and you connected it to confidence, but I'm wondering if we can go deeper than that. And I want to throw an example at you, Jessica, to highlight this. When we look at the the chakra system, our sexual sensual being exists in our sacral center Mm -hmm. and our sacral center is also the space in which we create, which we create Mm -hmm. life, create abundance, create all the things. So I'm wondering from your experience, Jessica, in this work that you do, how linked do you think our sensual sexual being is to our divinity, our creation, our, you know, our life force at large? I think it has everything to do with that. Completely, completely. I mean, I'll, you know, my story with you know, deep diving deeper into my sensuality, my sexuality was actually um, allowing myself to uh, feel that I could public publicly announce that I had an abortion 14 years ago and I buried it so deep down. So when the road versus Wade campaigns were coming out, I just had this enragement of myself. And so to make a long story short, I realized that I had a lot of baggage around um, what I went through and feeling the silence that I was like ashamed of. So once I started working through that and being able to talk about it now, I felt this like this internal wave of like liberation of myself. And it was probably the first time that I recognized that this was actually a part of like holding me back in my business. So I think it has absolutely everything to do with our creativity, with um, ourselves and the work that we're doing, no matter what it is. I think also, of course, relationships, but I think it's deeper than that. The authenticity that we get to bring into this um, leadership that we get to step into within ourselves. So for me, it's been really linked to the silence that I felt that I needed to have. And it wasn't anyone else made me feel a certain way. It was just, it was me. I was so, I was so ashamed that um, I did something like that. And not that I regretted it, but I think just like the fear of being rejected. So once I started to integrate that part of me, I, I just, I really, I started to have more dance parties. I started to just feel more into my body. I would go to more workshops that were more embodiment, sensual base. I wanted to tap deeper into that. And then it's like, we're here. And now it's like a big part of my business is like more stepping into confidence and leadership. So I, I have to say, like, I definitely think it was a big part of this side of myself that I needed to embrace, to get to this place of where I'm at. 
I'm so proud of you, my friend. I honor you and that release and that expression. And thank you for sharing that with all of us. And as soon as you mentioned it, I felt not just the fact that you've moved through that, but I, I, I felt the empowerment behind it. Right. And I think, again, I just want to highlight this here. We all have unique lives. We all have unique pains and traumas that we'll go through in, with your example of the abortion, right? But the potential that is that is unlocked by liberating ourselves from it, we all have access to that kind of potential, right? H- how have you seen, you know, you obviously have shared this story before and you've processed it. How have you seen it impact people in your life, whether it be friends, family, people that you work with, has it motivated them to do the same sort of thing as an example? Yeah, I I think it's been just a lot of, uh, a lot of feedback of just like, you just have a glow. Like you are stepping more into your own authentic truth. Um, For me, it's been you know, it's so funny because like I'm a big people person, I'm a big extrovert, but there was part of me that was so afraid to maybe speak up or have a different opinion or belief um, because I was so afraid of rejection. And by the way, it's 444 here. Perfect. Um, Perfect. <laughs> and so what this, by me sharing the story, it was almost just like me being able to express my voice that I never really had, that I thought I did. Um, Because I was kind of, I'd be kind of, mixing and matching, um, like chameleon, I guess in a way, um, through, through life. And I didn't realize it. So by me facing this and sharing it, it's not only yes, given other women, like a place to be like, wow, I feel seen. I feel supported. I, I thank you. But also on the other side of it, it's been just a compliment of, of my friends and also strangers on the internet sharing with me that like your confidence is giving me confidence. Like you just have a glow about you. And so ever since that point, it's been a really, it's given me more, um, it's given me more opportunity to kind of share more of these vulnerable aspects that I just, for me, it's not that I don't keep things private, but I, I think that there is vulnerability um, helps create connectivity and, um, and helps breed that part of it. Right. And so the more, again, when we talk about personal freedom, embracing your free heartful alignment, it's about being vulnerable with yourself, not necessarily with your audience or people, but just more of your, with yourself. So if that's my outlet to express that, that I feel very comfortable, whoever would comment or whatever, feel secure in that, then I'm going to share it if it's going to help one person. So it's, it's changed a lot um, since I started speaking more into those type of topics. Ooh, I want to speak about vulnerability here because this is a, you opened it and let's go deeper into it. Cause it's, <laughs> it's, and I agree. I think the most important person being in your life that you need to be vulnerable with is yourself, right. To allow yourself mm-hmm. to, feel the feelings, to accept, to surrender, to, to, to uh, have faith in your divine will. Mm -hmm. But, but I cannot overlook the power in you being vulnerable, not just to inspire others as you did with your beautiful story, but also to attract in, right? I've noticed, and this is what I want to get your thoughts on. Whenever I am being authentically vulnerable with something that's moving through me, so I'll give an example. I um, a part of my story is that I was I was abused, sexually abused as a teenager, and as I've started to be more vulnerable with those kinds of painful experiences, I've noticed people attracted into my world, right? Whether that be through business opportunities, whether that be through new friendship dynamics, whether it be through romantic partnerships. So I guess what I want to ask you, Jessica, is does vulnerability help us manifest? Does vulnerability help us, you know, attract in more of a life that we actually want? Absolutely. I don't, I don't think that we can manifest if we're not honest and vulnerable with ourselves, no matter if that's through our uh, vulnerability and like being honest, or if that's vulnerability and like sharing more of these deeper parts of ourselves that we've been moving through. 
Um, I think a lot of times we like to suppress things um, because we don't have an outlet to speak to them to. So, you know, and we manifest through our unconscious mind. So if there's something that you're manifesting that might be triggering that wound of yours, you're going to get continuously being received opportunities to open that wound, right? And, and heal it. So it it works directly correlated. Uh, vulnerability goes hand in hand with absolutely everything. Like business is personal um, and relationships need to be vulnerable and we need to be vulnerable with ourselves before we can even, and I'm sure you've heard the saying, we can only go as deep with others as we've gone with ourselves. So if you're, if you're desiring to have a deeper type of relationship with your partner, you have to ask yourself, am I giving that to myself? Because if I'm not, then you're not going to attract, you're only going to get the level of depth that you've gone with yourself with that other person. So, yeah. And we'll continue to, yeah, the quote that comes in as you're speaking is uh, the Jung quote that I'm sure you've heard of. Until we make the conscious, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will continue to project into our outside world and we will call it fate. So another way to say yeah. that, until we're vulnerable and get honest with ourselves, those shadows don't just go away. They're not, they're not getting yeah. our attention on the inside world. So now how will they get our attention? They'll project into our external relationships in the wounds and the triggers and the pain that we have, right? Yeah. Relationships are definitely a mirror for that 100%. <laughs> Jessica, I could, um, I could talk to you about all this stuff all day. We have, uh, we're on a very similar soul path and it's, it's nice to reflect in your light. But I want to be, I want to be um, respectful of your time, and I want to ask you about this beautiful retreat that you have coming up that you're planning that is in alignment with all these topics that we're talking about here today. So, I guess let me ask you, with this beautiful experience that you're creating, what are you most excited about in its in its in its establishment and its birthing into the world? Mm. Well, first, it's going to be in Taos, New Mexico, um, which is a very sacred place um, in the United States. And it's just such a beautiful area for um, exploring and hiking and also just connecting with the culture there. And so what I'm really looking forward to is just the outcome. Not only, okay, if I can be a little um, selfish here, I'm very excited to teach (laughs) the workshop, you know, and so, because it's just like my absolute favorite topics. And, and so it's under my uh, my brand, The Purposeful Soul Project. But there was something within me that was like, I think we need to shift the name because this one's going to be more about embracing your freedom. Mm. And it's kind of just been this collective um, clump of what I've been navigating the last three years of my spiritual awakening. So what I'm really excited about is not only holding space for these women to undergo their own internal transformation, but ultimately get to witness themselves being raw and vulnerable. That is like my favorite thing ever. Um, and holding a container for that because it can be scary. It can be challenging. Um, but when we want to shift our career, when we want to find more purpose, when we want to call in our dream partner, we have to recognize that we have to be our own role model for what we are attracting. When we talk about manifestation, like we just did a few seconds ago, we have to, we're, we're manifesting at that subconscious level. So if you don't feel confident, if you don't feel freedom, if you don't have all these qualities that you're looking within another person or another career or within your own business, then you're not going to receive those. You have to be the change maker in your life first in order to receive the things that you want. So this retreat is going to help whoever is there, whoever is a, whoever is calling, feeling called to help you unlock that part of yourself and embrace your freedom and whatever your own definition is. So I'm really excited about that. And to also share, because I think this is such a big highlight, is that we're going to be doing a ceremonial sweat lodge mm. with the Native American tribe. And yeah. I'm very excited because that was a big part of getting in discomfort and allowing myself to do the change work. So yeah. um, it's going to be a big transformative weekend, to say the least. Yeah, that's a um, 
part of my awakening Have process. Have you had the privilege to do yeah. one before? Yeah, okay. part, of, part of my awakening process involved the sweat lodge. So uh, I I Ooh. can I can definitely recommend the process, like a real one. Not I'm not talking about jumping in a infrared sauna and just staying in it for like right. 20 minutes that this is, this is not the same thing. This is, no. <laughs> you know, rounds, rounds and someone guiding you. And it's a, it, I think in the native American, you can correct me because you probably are doing more research around this, but in the native American culture, ideally it's meant to, it was ideally created to help men experience the, the, the process of childbirth, right. To help the men connect mm. to the the lovingly but extreme well it is mother yeah, yeah. mama mama gaia and the yeah. womb right yeah. it represents the womb so yeah and you stepping yeah, and out also of that some, yeah yeah and uh for men to connect to their uh manlyhood as yeah. well yeah mm-hmm. so um i'm excited i'm excited for the people that are going to connect to this if they want to find out more i'll put I'll put your, I'll grab all your details here in a second, Jessica, and I'll put them in the show notes for people tuning in. You can click the links and go straight to signing up for this beautiful experience. Um, I had a question that I wanted to ask you quickly before I get to my last question that came up as you were sharing this beautiful container that you're making. For all of the healers out there, light workers, coaches tuning in that are most likely in the process or have already made their own 3d events their own retreats their own uh, workshops in your opinion jessica is there a difference between helping someone over zoom and helping that same person in the same sort of with the same tools but in the 3d what is the difference when you get to see them flesh to flesh um there's more uh intimacy Um, sometimes you can feel more of their energy. It just depends on the type of person that you are. Um, a lot of my work is through zoom. So I really enjoy having the flexibility and I can connect really well with my clients. However, being in person is, it it just doesn't compare, uh, breath work is different in person. Having a retreat or a workshop is different in person. You get to, you get to be a part of the collective energy. So no matter what it looks like for you, if you've done both, like you, there is a difference of being, it just doesn't compare to that no. regard. So, um, no. and I think that's what I, I really am starting to feel called from spirit is to get deeper into person um, and do more of these experiences because there is something that just feels so magical being in that space. You have a lot of energy um, compared yeah. to, you know, maybe being online, so to speak. So, yeah. yeah. I'm right there with that calling that you have. I, I'm like, this year for me, the next year uh, is the age of co-creation with other people in the 3D, right? Because it's just, just, just to add, just to add what you're saying, it's a, it becomes a multi-sensory experience, right? When you're over Zoom with someone, you know, we're Zoom right now, right? I can see you, I can hear you, but when we're in the 3D, now we have the touch, right? Now we have the the extra sensories that, as we said before, right, with our sensuality, they are gateways back to more spirit, right? So Mm -hmm. more senses equals more spirit. Yeah. I love it. Agreed. Jessica, thank you for your time today. I, I really appreciate the soul that you are. I have one last question before I let you go. This is the Cosmic Love Antenna. And much like you, I grew up in a religious upbringing and... I became very disillusioned with the idea that my higher power was a bearded man on a cloud outside of me. And I became atheist, but then I came back around when I remembered that my high power is this consciousness of love that exists in my heart. So I'm wondering, Jessica, in your world, how do you personally define love? Hmm. That's beautiful. I define love by just feeling good and feeling grounded, uh, feeling safe, feeling connected with, and just really feeling purposeful, like you're making an impact in whatever that is, um, whether that's another person and you are co-creating with that person and making an impact and helping each other get better or be better, or if that is living a purpose through helping the collective. Um, to me, love is just a deep 
appreciation and, and a gratitude for just who you are and who you get to be. A beautiful little soundbite that we can definitely take out of this episode, Jessica. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for all that you're doing in the world. I love you very much. I appreciate you. I love everyone that's tuned in today. If uh, this has hit your heart, please share this out with a friend, a family member, or a lover. But regardless, until next time here on the show, we send you love, we send you light, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna with me, your host, Harrison. If you gained value or this episode hit your heart, please remember to share this out with a friend, a family member, or a lover. You can also leave your love over on Apple Reviews and Spotify Star Feedback, and this helps me spread my frequency to more souls in need. Finally, if you want to connect with me deeper, want to reach out, interested in coaching, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn at Harrison Ma, Ma spelled M-E-A-G-H-E-R. Sending you so much love.